State of Runic Synchro, please. Dead. Okay. <laughs> I know what you guys want. I know what you guys want. I specifically made this not a tier list. This is meant to be more like just a visual aid for me to just talk about one deck one by one. Think about what the ban list does to it and all that kind of stuff. If you want to know what I think, how good the deck is after the ban list, you're just going to have to listen to what I say because I'm going to give you that. For example, we're going to put pure snake eye into the loser of the ban list category, obviously, but it still remains a playable deck. So if you want to know exactly how good I think a deck is, you can't just <laughs> go to the end of the thing and just look at the list like you always do with the tier lists. Let's start with snake eye because it is currently the best deck and the snake eye cards were not touched on the ban list. I would heavily classify this the following way. I think before this ban list, pure snake eye was by by far the better version of the deck simply because it had the room for non-engine and it had the omni negates it now loses all of these omni negate possibilities now there's probably stuff you can replace those with in pure snake eye and i think pure snake eye remains playable you can probably find some still pretty good combo lines in it maybe you can replace the savage and the baron with some other stuff but by nature you are forced to play snake eyes more interactive now like you cannot just make the ignorant omni negates even if you decide to play pure snake eye which i think is a win in my book and it definitely makes pure snake eye a big big loser of this ban list it remains a tier one deck don't get me wrong but i honestly think maybe fire king snake eye is better now simply because the fire king snake eye deck just puts up a lot of cool interactions and that might be what you want my first instinct is that fire king snake eye is going to be the best deck after this ban list however I think that's a good thing because that version is so much more fun to play against, so much more interactive, and also so much more beatable. That's why I like this ban list uh, a decent amount, because it forces you to play more interactive versions of the deck. Rescue Ace, I would say, remains a little bit unchanged. I think Rescue Ace was an okay deck before the ban list. It was just hard to compete with the pure Snake Eye deck, obviously. I think Rescue Ace is probably okay after this ban list. Nothing crazy but yeah. I also didn't include Thunder Dragons, but I guess I can talk about Thunder Dragons real quick, but I don't think Thunder Dragon is going to be on par with the modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks. And ironically, I don't even think Colossus is that good anymore. The whole gimmick of Thunder Dragon is that it has just Colossus, really. Maybe there are some Thunder decks out there where you can use the Thunder Dragons as an engine. I haven't seen any of them yet, though, but I don't think pure Thunder Dragon is going to be a thing. All of these decks we're going to have put into a winner category, obviously. All of these decks got a powerful piece to their engine back and that is good for them i want to talk about these in a more nuanced way than just slapping them all into winner and then calling it a day right so orcist in its pure form is going to be a rogue deck in my opinion i think there is a slight chance for the orcist engine to see some play somewhere i don't know exactly where that would be people are saying orcist horus uh someone said runic orcist i don't know i am quite honestly not sure how you're going to be able to use the Orcus cards best. I think Pure is going to lack a little bit of power. You know, the Pure Orcus end board was like good in 2019. Not very good in 2024, I don't think. Magispector also obviously is a huge winner of this ban list because it got Kirin. That being said, I don't think that makes it good. Honestly, this might actually go here. I have a hard time evaluating this. It might be unchanged because Magispector was already, let's call it a playable rogue deck, like maybe lower tier three, like the deck was viable you could like play it in like locals and do well with it it was okay i think it remains that i think the biggest deal with these unlimits is sky striker i want to preface this by saying i think pure sky striker is complete cope what i really think is very very good and very very interesting is the sky striker package because a couple things happened in this ban list outside of them unlimiting engage right because with the banning of baron de fleur and savage they have made board breaker approaches in general a lot more realistic to work. And the Sky Striker engine is very, very strong in board breaker formats and board breaker decks because it generates card advantage, it outsports, it's very flexible. You can decide what you do with it. Either you get bodies with Hornet drones or you get Widow Anchor or you get graveyard interaction, whatever you want. I think the Sky Striker package is going to be very, very worth exploring. Heroes, I think, remains unchanged. I've talked to some people that play heroes and they said like the third Mali isn't 
isn't even that big of a deal. And also, Nibiru is already super popular. But without Baron and Savage in the mix, I think Nibiru is going to be in like 99% of decks. If it's not the main deck, then it's going to be the side deck. And I don't think that um, Hero has a great way to play around it. From my understanding, once again, I'm not too deep into Heroes. It's going to be slightly better, but pretty much unchanged in terms of its position. Tierlament is a, is a winner of this ban list. Probably more than Orcist is. In multiple ways as well. Tierlaments loves the third malicious to make Beatrice. That's great. But Tierlaments also loves this environment, right? Because board breaker formats are better for tier limits i think because tier limit doesn't have that much room for non-engine so if you are in a format where you need to play a lot of hand traps tier limit isn't that great for that but because the snake eye decks don't make baron and savage anymore you can now maybe get away with like cards like talents and so on and so forth i think that's a good thing for tier limits the deck isn't bad into nibiru either depending on how you play it i still don't know if it becomes top meta but i've seen some people mess around with like impulse into fire attacker because that's also a level six and then you have malicious for some extra combo lines and some more like uh, engine when you go second all that i think that's cool i think tier limit is maybe a force to be reckoned with after this ban list let's talk about another loser that i am very glad is a loser of this ban list and that is monadium monadium loses baron and that's a big deal for it i am a big fan of the fact that monadium hopefully loses to nibiru a lot more now the deck might still have some appalooza lines but usually you can't make appalooza before five right right? Because you have to like link climb to get there. So you can get Nibiru almost all the time. And that's good. That's a good thing. Monadium experts might still be able to figure out some ways. That is possible, maybe. But uh, it's definitely taken a huge hit from this ban. And Monadium was already not that great. But I'm also, whenever it comes to Monadium, I have to admit, I am very biased because I just don't like the deck. I don't like the super combo heavy playstyle. So if anyone wants to put in the work to make Monadium still playable, sure, go ahead. Maybe you will succeed. I won't be trying that. <laughs> I don't want it to succeed. Then we have another category of decks that I want to talk about. And those are the so-called the beloved shifter decks, which are essentially Flu, Exosister and uh, Cash Tira. They kind of remain unchanged, I think. Shifter decks are going to be as good as ever. The thing is, I'm, I'm not calling these decks a winner because honestly, Cash Tira and Flu are already pretty good in the format right now. Maybe you guys don't realize that, but both Flu and Cash Tira have been racking up tons of tops and regional wins these last couple weeks so when i put these in unchanged what i mean by that is they were good beforehand and they are still good and exosister i guess also exists somewhere down there if you want to play a shifter deck i would highly encourage you to play flu or cash tira branded is a big winner of this ban list branded is historically pretty good in board breaker formats because a lot of the board breakers aren't great against branded and the most important thing is that the puppet lock still exists which is super super dangerous it's very hard to express how dangerous dangerous it is for the puppet lock to exist in a format where some people might be inclined to play board breakers and i think that could be one reason why people will not move away from hand traps so fast is because puppet lock punishes you so hard for playing a, a board breaker deck it is super super annoying that they left sanctifier slash gimmick puppet in the format that is very very concerning to me outside of that i don't really have an issue with branded but i think you are definitely going to have to respect branded in your deck building if you want to go for a board breaker main deck you can but you have to side deck for branded heavily i think dragon link it's not top tier before this ban list it definitely doesn't appreciate losing savage i think that's a little bit of an 07 situation sometimes it just happens happens that they make cards that are just meant for one archetype but they end up being too generically strong and i think that was the case with savage dragon i think it is sad that dragon link loses it i don't think it deserved a hit but at the same time savage was used in other decks more than it was used in dragon link honestly overall i am not sure if this is a good trade-off for sword soul protoss versus baron i'm gonna throw that one into unsure i honestly think it's more of a downside even because now probably Probably don't have a way to really play around Nibiru. Let me make one thing clear. No matter if this is good or bad overall for Sword Soul, Sword Soul was rogue and it remains rogue. Even if they had just gotten Protoss and not banned Baron, Sword Soul was still not going to be meta. Voiceless Voice, another big winner of the ban list. Even though nothing really changed for Voiceless Voice, it's easier to deal with Snake Eye now because Snake Eye got worse. If people are going to build their decks and rely on people not having Omni Negates and then Voiceless Voice comes around the corner and has an Omni Negate every turn, that could be pretty powerful. I think Voiceless Voice is going to be in a decent spot. The branded matchup is so bad. I'm not sure. Branded overall is a winner of this ban list, but I think 
you guys are disregarding something that I've been telling you guys over and over and over in the last couple of years, even since branded has been relevant. The more people perceive branded as a threat, the worse it becomes. That is always the case for branded. The more people think branded is going to be a problem, the more people prepare for it. And branded is a very one dimensional deck. Branded is very easy to deal with. Technically, there's a lot of cards that are really good specifically against branded and branded really enjoys to be in like the tier two category. You don't want branded to be a tier one deck because then people are going to de barrier and all that kind of stuff. And that's really annoying. And that is probably going to happen. Like I said earlier, you want to be prepared for Branded now. And that's not good for Branded. It's worth mentioning that Centurion is good against Nibiru. And Centurion is also good against Board Breakers to an extent, right? Because like talents and stuff you don't care about because Calamity is still legal. And that is a problem. So I think Centurion, if anything, classifies as like a little bit of a winner. I don't know if this makes it a viable deck. Kind of what it was before. But it does benefit a little bit from some of these changes. Sprites... I thought about this a little bit. I can't help but think that Sprite's kind of likes this ban list because Sprite is one of the few decks that can still ignore Nibiru. But at the same time, I still don't know what exactly you would want to play Sprite with. So I think Sprite has potential. Centurion and Sprite are similar in the way that they are good against Nibiru. At the same time, they weren't really good before the ban list. So are they really going to be good enough after the ban list? I'm not sure. Basically, those kind of decks is something you'd have to experiment with. Labyrinth, I think, is kind of neutral on this ban list. I think the Fire King matchup is really hard. And the fact that Fire King is now more popular probably is bad for you. I think the Branded matchup is also kind of hard so that's not great for you you are a good deck against nibiru so that's good for you so there's some pros and cons for it you could argue that it's a loser because fire king and branded win i think that's a fair take pearly is a big winner of this ban list the obvious reason is that pearly receives a second delicious memory which is a big deal for the deck on the other hand the deck wasn't even that good beforehand which means the question still remains does it overtake other stuff in the format another big deal is also that the deck just doesn't care about nibiru at all like literally if you nibiru pearly they have more cards than before because of the field spell and because of my friend pearly i think pearly is going to be something that people are going to try at the same time i don't know if it's going to be good enough i think pearly has one chance and that is that people don't expect it maybe because people are going to be very focused on Snake Eye and Branded and maybe Voiceless Voice. So if people disregard Pearly, maybe you can get away with like an unaffected Noir. As soon as people start respecting it again, it's going to be tough for you. Specifically, I think like if people still play pure Snake Eye, that deck is now going to have room in the extra deck to play like a goddess. <laughs> okay, this is why we're here for, right? Talk about Runix real quick. I'm torn on Runix. I'm going to be honest with you. On the one hand, Runix, and I'm talking combo Runix. I'm not talking Runix stuff because uh, we're not going to mention runic stun even all of the runic synchro decks losing baron really freaking hurts this is the one little sting that i have i love that baron is banned but the fact that runic synchro decks don't have it anymore hurts me on another note runic decks do hate playing against cards like savage and baron i think runic decks can thrive in an environment where you can play some board breakers like talents or evenly if you can rely on those more to break boards going second that's good for runic decks i think that is a positive it depends if you find a way to deal with cards like Nibiru. It really depends. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm leaning more towards actually it might be a problem. Same with Snake Eyes. I put Snake Eyes and Labyrinth down here even though they still remain like playable decks. I think Runic has applications for the format, but uh, replacing Baron is gonna be hard. Chengying is the new main level 10 for Runic. I mean, Chengying is really good. There are options. There are combos and the deck is typically good in board breaker formats. That is all good for Runic, but not having Baron means that you are kind of limited to what you can do on the first turn which is a good thing overall i'll have to go in the lab with some runic versions and see i will be there you can find me in the lab with runic decks don't worry about it we'll see if it's possible salamangrate is a loser of the ban list simply because nibiru is going to be more popular and i think that's bad for salad it's not like the worst but it's kind of whatever vanquish soul uh it's kind of like in the same boat as centurion and sprite of like decks that don't really care about nibiru and therefore that's fine it can also play shifter to deal with fire decks yeah it's just okay thinking about unchained after this ban list just makes me sad because when i sat here and i thought about hey certain mid-range decks 
it's really going to depend on whether they can play around Nibiru and so on. And then I thought of Unchained and I was like, dude, if they had given them back Sharvara to two or to three, maybe it could have been real, right? Because I remembered all of the interesting ways that this deck had to play around Nibiru without needing Baron. It would have been really cool. However, I think with one Sharvara, I can't help but think that's just not going to be enough. I don't think Unchained benefits from this list. I think it needed Sharvara. This was a little bit different of a thing than I usually do when I make tier lists. I just use this as like a template to voice my thoughts on the format and on some decks and the position that they're going to be in. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and if you have any decks that you think are going to heavily benefit or not benefit from this list or if there's anything you want to know my opinion on. Obviously, as always, you can leave a comment down below. Appreciate you for watching and uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.